and I'll take My mom's room empty. I like it. It's echoing in here. Oh, I just can't believe it. I've never seen my parents' closet empty in 36 years. Was <sighs> the bathroom empty? This place isn't home anymore. I just can't believe, like, I'm walking through my house empty. I was so fucked up about it. You know, we just don't ever think that this day is gonna come. This is just a lot to take in. All these boxes. Like it's not a house anymore. I can't even believe this. And this is my fucking piece of shit brother's stuff. Been a fight with him, and I'm so done with it. Every step of the way has been a fight. Why don't you take your stupid Jar Jar Binks bullshit? You fucking are Jar Jar Binks. Worst fucking Star Wars character ever. Every single step of this has been a fight from him. All this shit. All my brother's stuff. Just everybody else will clean up after his mess because that's how it, that's how he operates. That's how he's always operate operated. That's been his uh modus operandi like our whole lives. It's like it makes a mess and everybody else cleans up after it. Downstairs in the basement and everybody else is doing the work upstairs. Playing video games and you know we're at my dad's outside mowing the lawn. It's just always, it's always about everything's about like this is what like oh this is so fucked up. I just can't believe it. I can't sure. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking when I painted that. I just want to go home. I haven't even eaten dinner yet. It's a fight. Yeah, I had a fight to go through with my mom's stuff. With these fucking assholes. I just want to go home. This thing is pretty cool. I think Nico will like this because I think Nico something with the sun in Japan. Is like the only person in my family that's been there for me. It's my cousin Nico. Thank God for her. I'm hearing the echo in here is so fucking weird. I can't even take it. I had to do this though. It's like part of the grieving process that you need to have, you know? need to grieve the house, the loss of my mom and my family and just my life is so different now. I don't even have my brother because he's a fucking asshole. All right. 
So as you guys can see, that was me walking through my mom's empty house after I had finished cleaning it out. And it was a really emotional time. And looking back on it, I'm, you know, I can feel all those feelings again. I mean, I could just feel every bit of emotion that I felt saying goodbye to the house and just everything. I felt like a piece of me was just dying. And uh, so I'm going to bring you guys into the next video, kind of explain how the house got emptied and what I went through after that. So, um, so I read you guys some emails and here we are back to telling this horrible story because it, it is a horrible story. The whole time I was going through this in my head, I just kept thinking to myself, like my mom got completely lost in this whole process. It was almost like she was completely forgotten about her, her wishes and what she would have wanted. Nobody gave a shit anymore. Nobody cared. Nobody cared what my mom would have wanted and it really, really upset me. This isn't about money or who's a better executor or who did the most or whatever. It's about my mom and what she would have wanted. And I know my mom would not have wanted me and my brother battling one another. That just goes without saying what mother would want their kids fighting over her estate. With all this bullshit fighting, it was like, hello, do you remember like why we're doing this? We're doing this because our mother died. Like if she would have been here to see what was going on I she would have been devastated I completely devastated I mean this is not how we were raised and I remember thinking this in my head the whole time like how did two people who were raised by the same parents end up so completely different plus his moral compass somewhere along the way it seems like it's just so disappointing it's like dude like do you remember our mom and what she would have wanted and does that even play any role in your thinking I don't know if my brother even gave a shit about my mom at this point. And that was the hardest part for me. It was just like, why is she so lost in this? Why do you not care about what she would have wanted? My mom didn't want this. Nobody wants to die knowing that their kids are going to go on to battle over bullshit that's left in their house. So I read you guys a couple of the emails that my brother and I, my brother, that Satan had sent you know and I finally gave in to emailing because I was like dude this is just going nowhere and I really got to a point where I was like I just want to clean the house out and get this over with after I had figured out that the estate sale wasn't happening I'm like okay so what are we doing here how are we getting this house emptied my brother sends this thing to my attorney this was like the very next day I think I don't remember exact days and everything it's a little fuzzy at this part but I do remember that he sent my attorney this estimate to have the house cleaned out by this company called pack Rye, okay and they were gonna charge us some exorbitant amount of money and this was from an email from my attorney and as you can see this company wanted to charge us one thousand seven hundred and thirty eight dollars so basically this company would have just came in and whatever i hadn't finished packing up they would have just thrown out and I, like so i wasn't even done fully going through the house but everything just would have gotten thrown out. And my brother, he was just totally okay with this. He had no objection to this and thought it was completely fine. And of course the attorneys did too because, you know, they don't give a shit. They're, they just want to get their money and be on their way. I think they were going to charge us to basically come in the house and just throw everything in the back of a truck and just drive off with it. And I was just like, I cannot believe that my brother is just willing to throw any everything away. I should also mention in this part that there was still a pretty good amount of stuff left in the house at this point in time. I mean, my you guys saw in that video at the beginning that I had a lot of my brother's stuff that I found as I was going through the house and he took most of that stuff. And it's like, he was just gonna throw all that stuff out and he was completely fine with that. And then sit there and bitching about me taking stuff. Like, that's what I don't understand. You were ready to just trash the whole house. I wasn't done going through my mom's house yet. I, I literally wanted to go through everything. This is it. It's so hard. I can't explain it to you guys. It's like you just want to keep everything. You go through the house and you start looking at items and it's like everything has a memory attached to it now. It's like, oh, I remember when she bought this or I remember when somebody gave her this. All these things are playing through my head and I'm like, I'm, my biggest fear was just not being able to go through the house. You're willing not only to not go through the house yourself, 
help, but you're willing to pay a company money to take this shit away. What? You don't want to go through the house at all. You're done. You're done. You skim the surface and that's it. You're just done. They took what they wanted and everything else was just trash to them. And that is so disgusting to me. I finally took it upon myself one day. I was at my mom's house. I said, you know what? Fuck this. I'm going to clean my mom's house out. I don't care if I have to do it by myself. My mom had told me so many times that she would be mortified if strangers went through her shit in her house. I'm not, I'm not doing it. I'm sorry. I can't. I can't do that to my mom. You know what? Her humility still mattered to me. It's not that she had anything in her house that like wouldn't be really super embarrassing or anything. Why am I going to let a stranger do what I am completely capable of doing? Not only let a stranger do, but pay a stranger to do what I should be doing. And so I went to the store one day, I bought a bunch of boxes, I bought tape guns, and I just went to the house and I started packing everything up, everything. So I started in her den, I worked my way across the house, and I, I packed up my mom's entire fucking house by myself. By myself. My brother had no interest in this, okay? And when I finally did tell him that I was packing the house out and I'm not paying some company to do it, him and Satan would periodically come to the house and like check up on what I was doing. And so I kept taking pictures, you know, here's the boxes and here's this room empty and, you know, to, to show them my progress. And as I went through the house, I would find things that were my brother's, right? Things that I was shocked that he didn't take. For instance, this painting. My brother went through this like lonely phase okay where he thought he was like picasso or some like jackson pollock i don't know he thought he was some abstract artist and he bought this huge canvas and he started painting this picture not my style but he was painting this picture and i go downstairs one day and i see that the picture was there and i'm like he was so proud of this this painting that he did and i just couldn't believe that he left it behind like, dude, like, you put all that work into that picture, and I guess because, you know, it is a weird painting, I'm not gonna lie, it's not my style, I wouldn't want to hang it up in my house or anything, but you painted it, put it in your basement or something, I don't know, I, I, I'm just like, how do you leave that painting behind and you just don't give a shit? And that wasn't the only painting that he left behind. He left behind these two paintings that he did for my mom when we were younger, which I was like totally surprised. I mean, and this picture of my grandfather that he painted and so much other stuff. So I was kind enough to every time I would find something that I would think would have some sentimental meaning to him, I was kind enough to leave it on my mom's kitchen table and let him decide whether he wanted it or not. All right, so I just want to show you guys some of the some of the stuff that I uh, found as I was going through the house. I would take stuff and I would leave it on the kitchen table. And not only would it tell me that he was at the house because, you know, I would know if he came and picked up stuff. And that's why I took so many pictures of it. It also told me this stuff has meaning to you and you were just going to leave it behind and let it get thrown out. So some of the stuff that I found, and I was kind of an asshole about it, but rightfully so. I mean, I'm cleaning my mom's house out all by myself. These people did not lift a finger. They didn't do a goddamn thing. They didn't put one thing in a box. They didn't pack anything. They didn't throw anything out. I mean, it's it's just unbelievable. You know, so it started off, I, I found some art projects of his, and I have to be a little bit of an asshole. Like, I don't know, it's just like, I can't believe he was... Yo, he knows this stuff is in the house, and I can't believe that he was just going to leave it behind and let it get thrown out by this company that he wanted to hire. You know, so I found, like, this little magnet that he made and this hand printing and a comic that he drew. I think those are drawings back there. You know, and then, you know, you guys know we girl makeup mops is a little bit of a smart ass. So I found these um, picture frames. Those were actually party favors from his engagement party to his ex. And uh, so that's a picture of him and his ex. So, you know, I had to leave that there because I had to piss Satan off along with the toilet cleaner because we know how much she loves to take my mom's toilet cleaner. So I would, you know, just keep putting things up there. Uh, I found his old his his old bowling ball. It was like his first bowling ball and it was still in good condition. And I'm like, I don't know. Isn't that something you would want to have? Like we used to go bowling with my dad every Saturday when we were kids. My dad took us bowling all the time. Like, isn't that something you want to have as a... 
I don't know, is a memory, you know, and then of course, I'm a little bit of an asshole again, so I left some liquor bottles, and I think they actually took some of these, and then, <laughs> you know, I found the movie Girl Interrupted, and I was like, well, that's perfect, my brother told me that Satan has borderline personality disorder, and this movie is about a girl who has borderline personality disorder, so I thought maybe my brother could benefit from watching that. You know, I found some pictures. Back there is a picture of my Aunt Betty and my Uncle Bob that I actually photoshopped onto this background back in the day, like, when Photoshop was, like, in its infancy, but, um... I don't want that shit. I don't want to even look at those people. But the most craziest thing that I found here was this picture of me and my brother in this frame. I think it was some from some vacation that we went on. I don't know if it was like Florida or Disney World or something. But what's really crazy about this is if you guys look, and I'll show you guys a different picture. One of the captions on it says, how to have a loving family relationship. And I'm like, wow, how ironic is that, you know? There's all these pictures of my brother and I smiling together. And it's just crazy, you know, because, again, I never would have thought we would go five years without, you know, being on speaking terms with one another. So I drew some question marks around it and I left it. And I'm pretty sure he took that. Whatever they didn't take, they would just leave it there. They wouldn't throw it out or put it in a box or do anything. They just left it on the table for me to clean up. Here again, I found some type of game and then uh, I found, like, his first license. Like, I don't know. Wouldn't you want that? I found his birth certificate. It's not his real birth certificate, but it's the one from the hospital. And then um, my husband was there. Thank God my husband and his my brother-in-law, his brother, helped clean the basement up because I was terrified to go into the basement for like long periods of times because there was tons of crickets down there. There was all sorts of little creatures, like little bugs. And I have a huge bug phobia. And so, you know, my husband came with his brother and they helped me clean the basement out, which was, oh my God, I can't even say thank you enough. And uh, so one day, I think we had to leave this check. I signed it and left it on the table for him. It was the for the tax return. And uh, my husband put it in the mouse trap. It wasn't really set. It was it was just in there, clipped in there. But we, we, we had to fuck with him a little bit, you know? So yeah, I would just keep piling things on the table for him. And, uh, you know, he did take a lot of this stuff. I would find things like this whole bin here is a bin filled with all art projects that he did and like his first blanket and so my mom sewed him this little outfit and I had pictures in there and again that just would have gotten thrown out and I had some of his Star Wars stuff and his baby stuff there and that green box is actually his first train set which was like his favorite toy when he was a baby and he just left it there. And again, it would have just gotten thrown out. I actually ended up taking the train. Uh, my son has it. We still have it. I found so much cool stuff in my parents' house that would have got thrown away. Like, for instance, I found this. My mom kept this whole calendar of her pregnancy when she was pregnant with my brother. And she wrote all these, you know, things. And my brother's original due date was May 30th, I think. And he wasn't born until July 11th. And so, you know, she has all these things that they may induce her, but no. And, you know, she went to my cousin Nico's party. And then, um, you know, she has the day he was born and all the days she was in the hospital and her, her first day home. And my dad was home with him all day. And then it says my aunt, you know, Debbie came over and helped. And then on the 22nd, it was his first day out in the carriage. And I know this isn't a big deal. It's a calendar, but it's like, this is part of your history and part of your life. Don't you want this? Like, I don't know. I, I It just would have gotten thrown out. And, you know, one of the things that I didn't know is that my mom spelled my brother's name wrong on this calendar. Like, she must have changed the spelling somewhere along the lines. I had no idea she spelled his name one way and then changed it. Um, I don't know. It's just so sad to me. It's like she put all this time and effort into this. And he would have just been totally okay with it getting thrown out. It's like he doesn't care about anything. And then I just found like random stuff. Like I found this Aaliyah picture that I drew when I was in high school. I found tons of drawings and artwork. I found this drawing that somebody apparently did of my mom when she was in high school. I don't even know who drew this, but it was pretty cool. I never even saw it in my life. And then I found this. This thing was pretty cool. I remember we got this on vacation. It was like the first printer that could like draw a picture of a person. You know, it was a, a portrait of my mom that was drawn by some machine. And then I 
<laughs> this one's funny. I found this self-portrait I did of myself in second grade. It's pretty accurate because my hair was always a mess. I was such a tomboy. And then I found this drawing that I did. Oh, so sad. I can't believe my mom even held on to this. This was a drawing I did of my bird, Squeaky. Squeaky was a cockatiel that we had. And I mean, this bird was like my life. I used to play with this bird 24-7. And we were on vacation and we're on the way home. And I was sitting in the car drawing pictures of him. And we end up getting home and finding out that my neighbors who was watching him, their dog ate the bird and killed it. I found so much other stuff. For instance, this thing. And you guys are probably like, what the hell is that thing, Liana? Well, this thing was a novelty item that we saw at a gift shop in, I think, Pennsylvania. If you look closely, I know it's kind of faded, but it says, Pa is boss, as everyone knows, but what Ma says always goes. And it's a, again, novelty paddle. But my mom actually used to use this thing to beat the shit out of us. She broke too many wooden spoons over our asses, so she used this. So, you know, again, this would have got thrown out, but I have it, and it's hanging in my garage. I found this mug that somebody had gotten made for my dad when he, you know, redid the bar and everything downstairs. And it has his name etched in it and a plane because my dad actually used to take flying lessons. And, you know, my brother's so sentimental about my dad. He wants his, his wedding band, yet... He left a whole bunch of my dad's stuff in the basement and didn't even give a shit about it. And again, it would have gotten thrown out. I found this certificate that my mom got because she fought for this traffic light in our community and she had to make petitions and it was this whole big thing. And she got this award of recognition and, you know, again, would have gotten thrown out. And then, ironically enough, I found this book called Toxic People, How to Deal with People That Make Your Life Miserable. Somebody gave this to my mom when my brother started dating Satan. So, you know, I definitely had to take this one home because there's a lot of toxic people in my life. And then I found all these pictures of me. They were, you know, my baby picture, my dance pictures, and uh, yeah pictures of my awkward teen years but those weren't the only pictures I found though there were so many more my mom had all um you know a lot of pictures a lot of pictures check this one out that was me and my little bird I used to love that bird it's just crazy looking at all this old stuff and looking back on the memories and all the good times I had with my family that I don't talk to half the people anymore so this is so hard. I, I can't even tell you guys. Here, you can have some pictures of yourself, asshole. I don't even want to look at him. I'm so disgusted by him. Uh, check this out. We had like a pumpkin contest, you know, but like do the kids do the work in kindergarten? My mom fucking made this and I won the contest. Look how sick this thing is. She has hands, fucking lips, eyes. It's a bride. I mean, pretty good, you know? She was pretty creative. My mom. Here's a picture of me with it. And oh my god, that looks like my son. Holy shit, that looks like him. You know, there's a lifetime of memories in this house. And there were so many pictures that would have just gotten tossed in the garbage. You know, my brother's sitting there acting like he was so worried about the pictures. But he would have just thrown them all out. Our entire lives, our legacy was in every nook and cranny in this house and I found so much stuff and I just cannot believe that my brother had no sentimental attachment to any of it. He didn't care. It was a lot of work for me but I didn't give a shit. I needed to do this. I needed to look. I needed to hold on to the little things that were left of my family. I just found a video of my mom and dad's wedding that was on like an old reel to reel. This I had no idea that this video even existed. I never saw it before. I never even knew my parents had a video of their wedding. And the thought that this would have gotten thrown out, it just kills me. I mean, they did not even offer to help clean this house out. And it's so funny because if you guys remember, Satan referred to me as looting the house. And if you think about how sick it is that this girl actually used that term and wanted to gaslight me into thinking that taking my mother's stuff that I am t entitled to was looting the house. I mean, that just goes 
to show how sick this girl is. No, that's what you did, bitch. Because you went around, you took what you wanted, and everything else was garbage to you. And it didn't matter if I wanted it. It didn't matter that it wasn't garbage to me. It was garbage to them, so they just wanted to get rid of it. And I couldn't believe the amount of sentimental things that I found in the house that my brother had left behind. And I, I have a lot of it. There was a lot of shit. I still have some of it. I'm holding on to it. Why? I don't know. One day, if he ever realizes that he's a brainwashed robot in an abusive relationship and decides to leave her, I have his shit. I can't even explain it. And I go back to when my brother first moved in with Satan. I helped him clean out his apartment, okay? And I remember being in the apartment and my brother was just like, it was almost like he was in like a frenzy. Like it was so weird the way he was just throwing things out and throwing things out and throwing things out from his apartment. And he's like, she doesn't want me bringing anything. And I'm like, why? He didn't bring any of his like housewares or that kind of shit with him to Satan's house because she told him not to bring it. She didn't want it in her house. You could tell she's the type of person who doesn't want junk around, you know, so she probably told my brother not to take a lot of stuff from my mom's house. I don't know. And, and in my heart, I believe that there was probably stuff there that my brother would have wanted to take, but just couldn't take because she wasn't allowing him to. She took what she wanted. None of the stuff that was taken by my brother did I think that he would have wanted himself. It seemed like all the stuff that I, I would think he would want got left behind. One day, he's gonna regret this. I know he's going to, if he doesn't already. But you know what? I have nothing to regret. Do I have things that I did that I do regret during the whole, you know, hospital stay and in the last couple of months of my mom's life? Yes, I do. But I look back at it and I'm like, you know what? It, it was such a stressful situation and that's what happens. I know that my mom knows how much I loved her and I know how much she loved me and I know how much she meant to me and how much I meant to her. And nobody's gonna take that away from me. I could lay my head down at night and know that I did everything I could to help my mom. And then when she passed away, I did everything I could to carry out her wishes in the way that she wanted. And that's all I have to really worry about.